The global shortages of computer chips might be the single worst thing to happen to supply chains in recent years. It's caused the prices of just about everything from graphics cards to desk phones and even cars to go up. And that's assuming that you can even get your hands on one of these products in the first place. And because of the limited number of manufacturers that are making these chips, and the amount of time that it takes to erect new factories and get them to be operational, the shortages of these chips and thus the products that they go into don't appear to be becoming more available anytime soon. But there is a silver lining to all of this. Since the chip shortage doesn't discriminate in regards to what end product the chips were designed for, that means that there is a shortage of chips that nobody likes, such as the DRM chips that come installed on printer ink. That's right, Canon is being forced to manufacture ink cartridges for their printers without any DRM chips on them. Now you might be wondering, what is DRM and why would anybody put a computer chip on a print cartridge in the first place? Why would that even be required? Well, DRM stands for Digital Rights Management. It is a technology that locks down and limits what you can do with various pieces of technology. It's something that's put on by the manufacturer, and unfortunately, it's present in a whole lot of things. For example, Blu-ray discs that you might buy from a Redbox, they have DRM on them that prevents you, or at least tries to prevent you from copying the digital data off of the disc and then having it as a file like an mp4 that you could easily share with people online. The Blu-ray makers, they might enforce this DRM by limiting the kind of hardware that you can use for playback, which ultimately limits what you are able to do with the property, your property that you bought, even if you don't intend to pirate it. So you might not be able to use it on a certain kind of Blu-ray player or watch it in a way that you might have intended, such as ripping the file from it and then maybe you want to just load that file onto a phone or maybe a laptop that doesn't even have a Blu-ray player because hardly any of them do these days. Tesla also implements DRM in their electric vehicles to artificially limit the range, so that's how far you can travel on a single charge, the top speed, and many other abilities of their cars, requiring you to purchase software features to upgrade your car, when in reality, the car just had software locks on it. It was physically able to do these things all along, so nothing was truly upgraded. And Tesla has also been known to put these locks back onto a car whenever you sell it to somebody else. So that means that the new owner has to purchase that lock removal all over again, allowing Tesla to double dip for the same exact features that have already been purchased. The DRM that is put on ink cartridges isn't much different. The primary purpose of it is to make sure that you are using so-called genuine ink cartridges. And oh, wouldn't you know, these genuine ink cartridges just happen to be only made by the manufacturer that created your printer. But the problem with this is that ink is ink. As long as you have the right colors for whatever print job you're doing, and of course, ink cartridges that actually fit, your printer should be able to use them, and it shouldn't matter whether it's made by Canon, Epson, or HP. Again, ink is ink. In fact, I know with HP, or at least I know this secondhand from a guy that I know used to work uh, for Hewlett Packard, that they don't actually make a lot of the components for their printers. Canon does. Uh, apparently, Canon also wrote some of the software for their printers, and all of that just gets rebranded to Hewlett Packard. So those two brands in particular, they should have cross compatibility with their ink cartridges and their printers, but they don't because of those little chips that get installed on the ink cartridges 
that digitally identifies that cartridge as belonging to HP, Canon, etc. And then it limits its use to just printers of the same brand. Now, apparently the whole reason that printer manufacturers started doing this in the first place is that they actually lose money on their printers. They're sold at a price that is so low compared to the cost of manufacturing that they often lose money just on the sale of a printer, but they're able to recoup that money by selling you printer ink. Because in case you didn't know, printer ink is marked up insanely high, something like a 10,000% markup in some cases. Now, printer manufacturers, they could just be honest about this business model and maybe even offer you an option to pay more for a printer so that they don't have to enter into this shady business model to profit off of you as a customer, but no, they choose to add DRM because then that allows them to mess with your printer in other ways. These DRM chips, they've been used to do some pretty nasty things. Like for example, HP, has been caught before using this DRM to remotely disable the printing capabilities of people's printers after they canceled their HP Instant Ink subscription, which is supposed to be a service that saves you money by having you pay a flat rate monthly for ink while HP monitors the levels in your cartridges and then sends you refills whenever they detect that it's getting low. But it's kind of hard to say that it actually saves you money when they can just disable a perfectly good, mostly full ink cartridge. Clearly, this is a case of them using DRM in retaliation to punish the customer for canceling their subscription. And clearly, HP wouldn't be upset about you canceling that subscription unless ultimately they were making more money off of people that were using it versus just going and buying ink whenever they actually need it. So now Canon is put in an awkward position where they basically have to tell customers, hey, you know those messages that would pop up whenever your tech-savvy cousin would bring over some bootleg cartridge that cost one one-hundredth the price of our ink cartridges? Uh, you know, we would say that these cartridges aren't genuine and they might damage your printer. Well, you can just go ahead and ignore those warnings, at least for this temporary release of our same ink cartridges without the chip. Don't go and use any cheaper off brands or else your printer is going to implode and form a black hole that swallows the entire block you live on, sending everything to the eighth dimension. So here we have the instructions from Canon's website for how to bypass these messages. It's not anything too complicated or technical. You're basically just pressing OK on a message that comes up when Canon says that they don't recognize the toner cartridge. And then they give you a warning here that, oh, we might not be able to detect your toner levels. It might suddenly go from 100% to zero. But you know the best way to actually tell what your toner levels are? Just print out a piece of paper and see if it's printing right. Okay, that's literally how people have been doing it for decades. You don't need a computer to tell you whether or not your toner is low. Uh, and then here we have another example. You just press agree um, on them warning you that, oh, you inserted the wrong type of ink cartridge, so this might damage your printer, or, you know, results may vary, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so here's another example of how to bypass it. So really, really easy thing to do. Luckily, the DRM typically isn't so severe that it actually disables your ability to use off-brand ink cartridges. But now, whenever you go on eBay to buy some used computer parts and you become saddened at the fact that used parts can still sell for over 50% of MSRP, just remember that Canon is also suffering, and that makes the pain a little bit more bearable. Like and comment to hack the algorithm and have a great rest of your day.